morning, I'm Dave Canterbury with Pathfinder School. I uh, brought my arrow back out here and I went ahead and whacked that other tip that we put on it off yesterday. I had plenty of length to do that. I'm going to use this same arrow today for discussion and also to put a common man broadhead on here. We're going to talk about how to make those today. I also brought just a stick bow out here that I made you know, probably two years ago out in the same piece of woods. It took me about, I don't know, an hour and a half to manufacture it. And it's lasted all this time and it's still got about 52, 53 pound draw after all this time. Very little string follow. It does have some and it's off tiller a bit, but we'll talk about this bow in a little bit as well. First thing I wanted to do today, I went ahead and set up a little bit of a reflective tarp here just to keep the sun off of us today and out of the camera light. I also set up a whiteboard here because there's a couple concepts in archery that you need to understand when you're making your own equipment. And one of them is called the archer's paradox. And when it comes to arrows like this that you're making for yourself, it's a very important concept to understand. So let's talk about that for just a minute on the whiteboard, and then we'll go back to discussing how to make common man broadheads. Okay, what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about, and you'll have to excuse my writing, the archer's paradox. Now, in the simplest terms, what that's referring to is the way the arrow flexes this way or this way, or not at all, coming off of the bow, depending on whether you're right-handed or left-handed. And the reason that that happens is when your bow is strung and drawn, so we'll say that this is our drawn bow, and our arrow's in it, there's more energy buildup here than there is at the front of the arrow. And what that does is that causes the arrow to flex in flight so that when you shoot it, to look at it from a top view, that's your bow. And here is your arrow rest. When you shoot that, what happens is the energy buildup back here causes that arrow to flex. Because most bows are set up non-center shot. What that means is if this is the center line of your bow, your arrow is not sitting here. It's sitting off to the side, either on a shelf or just resting on the side of the bow, depending on what type of bow you have. And on this bow, you can see there's a shelf cut in this bow right here for the arrow to sit. Most bows are set up like that. Unless you've just made a round self bow and you're resting your arrow on your knuckle and shooting offhand. But at any rate, they will not be in the center of the bow. So, because they're not in the center of the bow, the arrow, when it comes off the bow, has to flex to go around that bow. Because your string is in the center of your bow. So when you shoot that arrow and build the energy up in the back, it has to flex to go around the bow and then it has to reflex to straighten out onto its path and that is called the archer's paradox. Now, the reason that's important is because arrows are generally built or set up by what's called spine weight. And spine weight is usually equal to or more than the draw weight of your bow. So if you have a 50 pound bow, the spine weight of your arrow should be 50 pounds plus or minus 5 pounds is a pretty good formula. But it should be plus nothing, or I'm sorry, it should be plus 5 minus nothing. You don't want it underspined. What happens is when your arrow bends this way, if it's underspined, in other words, the spine weight of your arrow here is too weak, it won't have time to reflex and straighten out before it gets to the target, and you will always shoot to the right. Now, if you're overspined, what generally happens is you will shoot to the left, but the dramatic amount that you'll shoot to the left will not be the same as shooting to the right with an unspined arrow. Because if your arrow doesn't flex enough, then it's going to fly fairly straight 
in the direction and point of aim. The problem is because your arrow is actually sitting on a shelf and not in the center of your bow, it's going to travel at an angle. And the further you travel, the wider the angle. So the further you are away from our target, the farther off to the left you're going to be. We've talked about that in a couple other videos as well. So generally speaking, you want your spine weight to be equal to your bow weight in draw. Now, that's the technical explanation. Let's get back to common man theory, okay? Okay, so to answer one more quick question before we go into <coughs> the, sim the simple version of this, someone asked me why you couldn't use wooden arrows or dowel rods with a compound bow. The reason that compound bows travel at 300 feet per second plus is because they're compound bows. They work on a mechanical pulley system which accentuates the bow's draw weight. A normal self bow is about 115 feet per second, plus or minus. A good recurve bow, you're probably getting 125 to maybe to maybe 140, somewhere in that neighborhood. Or a real good reflex deflex longbow. So there's a drastic difference in the speed of your arrow, which is why you can shoot arrows with a compound bow 45 and 50 yards accurately without much of an adjustment you know a few inches up or down you're not going to get that with a long bow or a recurve bow most hunting shots that are taken with long bows are at 10 to 12 yards generally 10 to 12 yards 15 is an outside shot anything over 15 I'm very hesitant to shoot with a long bow Recurves, you can get away with 20 pretty easy. The arrow's a little bit faster, you can get away with that. You don't get as much drop on the arrow. But because you get that increased speed out of a recurve bow, the wood also has an increased flex. And that is what causes the problem with a compound bow and wooden arrows. When you're talking about wood and you're talking about arrows, you have to pay attention to grain somewhat, just like you do when you're making a bow. And if you have a wooden dowel rod and the grain runs straight, then you have a good hunting shaft. And most of your hunting shafts that you have to buy that cost four and five dollars a shaft are made like this. And they're chosen from hundreds of shafts. The shafts that you find as dowel rods may look more like this. And the grain may be everywhere. You may have grains that run off on the side all over the place. Those are break points, okay? And that's what you have to worry about by shooting these type of arrows out of a compound bow because if you snap that arrow in half, you're going to drive the back half of it right to your forearm. So that's very important to remember. Now, getting back to the simplistic common man option with the dowel rods, I want to explain to you what you can do to ensure that your dowel rods aren't going to break in your longbow or your recurve bow. Okay, in the video that we shot yesterday, I told you to buy oak dowel rods. The reason for that is oak is a very hard wood. If you buy pine or maple, you're going to get a lot less spine weight right off the bat because they're soft woods. Oak is a hard wood, so it's going to have a heavier spine right off the bat. And you want a 3 8 inch dowel rod because that will give you a good heavy arrow. Now, what I do with my arrows when I go to Lowe's or Home Depot or Menards or wherever I'm going to buy my shafts, I'll take all the 3 8 dowel rods they've got and I'll lay them right on the floor. And I'll roll them around the floor and that's how I find the straight shaft. By rolling around the floor and I pull out the straight ones and I put the rest of them back Nobody's ever said anything for me doing that. They've looked at me funny a couple times. Nobody's ever said anything. Then I put the other ones back. Now, what you will notice if you look at these shafts, when you are picking out the shafts that rolled straight on the floor, you'll notice that the grain pretty well runs 
longitudinal on the shaft. And that is what causes them not to bend. If you get shafts with a lot of hooks in them or a lot of bends in them, pick those shafts up and look at them and you'll see that those shafts are bent usually where the grain run, runs off on the shaft. If there's a grain runoff where there was a knot or something, that's where that shaft is usually bent. You can correct that easy enough by heating that up and straightening the shaft, but why would you want to do that when you could get a good straight grain shaft just by laying it on the floor and rolling it around to make sure on that flat surface it rolls evenly and it's not warped or bent in any way. That's the way I pick my shafts and I always use oak. And if you use oak shafts, if you're using any bow up to 50 pounds probably, maybe even 55, you're not going to have to worry about spine weighting your arrows. To try to spine weight your arrows is a painful process to do each one. You can set machines up to do that in your house, simple machines, but it's a pain. Um, and if you do it this way and you use oak, you won't have to worry about it. You'll be a little bit over spined or right at the right spine for anything up to a 50 pound bow. You're not going to want to shoot anything less than 40 pounds for a hunting bow anyway. So anything between 40 and 50, 55 is going to be okay with a good straight grained oak shaft. You won't be under spined to where you've got issues hitting the target. And if you're shooting instinctively anyway, you're going to get used to where your arrows are hitting and you're going to know. And what you want to do is, when you build your arrows for your bow, you want to build a dozen arrows. Then you want to go out and shoot those arrows with field points or whatever you're going to use on them and find the three that shoot the absolute best. And those are the ones you want to use for hunting because you know that they're the most accurate. They hit in the same place all the time. They don't have, they've got the perfect spine weight and flex. And you can do all of that and have less than 25 bucks in a set of arrows and pick three good hunting arrows that you're going to use to hunt with. And that's what I would recommend that you do. Now, someone asked me yesterday, and again today, I believe, since I've been out here, I saw an email on my phone about just taking and sharpening the tip and heat treating it in a fire to harden it. And can I use that for an arrow? You can. It's not going to be very accurate over distance. The reason for that is you need your arrows to be weight forward. Your arrow needs to be heavier on the front end than it is on the back end. And because you're using duct tape or feathers or any kind of fletching that you use, is going to weigh the back end of that arrow down compared to the front where all you have is nothing but bare wood. So you need some kind of a tip on that arrow to give it that weight forward momentum that it needs to be accurate and to offset that back end weight where you've got your fletchings. So that's my recommendation. You can use them bare shafted in an emergency, especially for short distance like maybe bow fishing and things like that or you know, if you're going to go out and try to shoot something at four, five, six yards with a sling bow, you can get away with that. But if you're going to try to shoot 10, 12, 15 yards, you need weight forward on that arrow and you need a point. So we're going to talk today about making a common broadhead. Stay with me. We'll get right back together.